Hello crafty friends! My name is Alicia, but you can call me Crafty Owl. And I am here today to get stitchy with the newest Spellbinder Stitch Die of the Month, March 2023. I hope you'll stick around and see what I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Each month, I get sent a few of the new kits from Spellbinders to play with and share here on my channel. Today, I'm going to be showcasing the March 2023 Stitch Die of the Month, which is Nested Layered Stitch Petal. Now, if you're already subscribed to this kit, you should be on the way soon. But if after watching my video, you're interested in picking this up, it will go live to non-members on the 6th of the month. I will link it in the description box below, as well as all the other kits, if you would like to check it out. Now I'll be back a little later in the month to use the quick and easy card kit of the month and the large die of the month. So make sure if you want to see those and you're not already that you click on that subscribe button below. This new kit is four dies. You have kind of that cover plate in the background and then you can cut the circle or the diamond circle shape out of there. And then if you want a little extra opening in the center, they give you that die. Now, to layer on top of each of these sections, there is another die up here that cuts four circles at a time. So if you want to cover each of these up, you'll need to do two of these. Now, on the back of the insert, they do give you a card idea, but I know that there's going to be tons both over at Spellbinders on their YouTube channel and over on Instagram. So make sure to get some more inspiration. For my card today, I wanted the look of alcohol ink with some gold touches, but I didn't want to get messy and create my own backgrounds. So I have chosen a couple pieces of pattern paper from my stash, and I'll also be die cutting some heavyweight vellum. I found a scrap, and this is 36 pound. For my stitching today, I'm going to go with gold, and I haven't yet decided on a sentiment, but I probably will stamp and heat emboss it in gold when I pick one out. As I bring in other products and tools, I will be sure to let you know, but as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in that comment section below, and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! I'm going to get started today by doing the die cutting. I'm going to cut the cover plate and the diamond circle from that same alcohol ink paper, and I did try to cut them from the same area. Then I'm going to take the four circles and I'm going to cut those twice out of some heavyweight vellum from my stash. While I was off screen, I went ahead and decided to cut the center from my circle of diamonds. I cut the cover plate. I just love those little dotted kind of pierced details. And then finally, I discovered that those four circles at the top actually just cut out those small shapes but check out the fun leftovers that remain. I think that would be fun to cut this from a piece and make that a card panel. Then it was time for the stitching. Today I chose this gold thread from DMC and it's not like my normal, instead of the six strands, it probably has eight or more, but I just used it like normal. I got some threaded through a needle. To start it, I pulled it through the first hole and then I taped the tail with some adhesive that comes with the card kit right on the back. Now I did give that extra bit a haircut just so that didn't get pulled up through the holes as I was stitching. When I do my stitching today, instead of going from the center to every hole on the outside, I'm going to go to every other because you'll see here later that those little pieces 
cover up a lot of the holes and since I'm using more thread or more strands at a time I thought this would cut down on what had to go through that center hole. So I stitch through each of the corners and then I skip every other one. Now I will tell you I probably should have cut another copy of this maybe in white cardstock and put them together because this thread was a little rougher than what I'm used to and since it's only pattern paper it's a little more flimsy. So if you're going to do this I would definitely suggest that second layer and why don't you let me know if you stitch with any gold floss let me know what you use because I am not enjoying this. Here's a look at one diamond finished where I skip every other hole and I just then start the process of doing the remaining ones. Now the two on the left and right, they're not a full diamond shape because only those little white pieces will get stitched on those. Now after I had the second diamond completed, I'm like, hmm, I wonder what if I go ahead and put the vellum pieces on as I'm going around. So that's what I decided to do starting with that one. So you'll see here that once I have the diamond done, I grab one of my vellum pieces and then I just do a simple back stitch. I start with the second hole and go back to the first and then go from the third to the second. And those just each take three stitches so it went quickly. That way later I don't have to come back all around it and out and about wasting more thread but it just takes up less thread and it seemed to be a little bit quicker. I ended up finishing the rest off screen. This was honestly probably the most time consuming of the stitched kits I've gotten so far, but I had some longer form YouTube videos to catch up on, so I just watched and stitched, so it did go pretty quickly. But I would guess it was probably 45 minutes to an hour. This would be a great one if you like to watch TV maybe in the evenings, but you like to have your hands busy as well. Once all of the stitching was done, I worked on the sentiment. I will be using this set from an earlier kit in the year, and I will be heat embossing it with gold detail powder on a piece of vellum. Now since this is so small and I won't be able to use my magnet, I did use my stick and stamp mat and just place that vellum piece all the way down in the corner. Then I brought in my set and kind of moved it around to figure out what sentiment I wanted and would fit and I ended up choosing just saying hello. I thought this card then could be sent for any occasion. I pre-treated it with my powder tool and then I inked it up and stamped it twice with the Versamark to make sure it was nice and juicy. Then to finish it off, I poured on the embossing powder and got that powder heat set with my tool. I always just love seeing that powder melt. Now that all of the pieces are ready, I can start to put the card together. I started by adding some ATG and liquid glue to kind of the cover plate cut piece. The ATG, if I would have put it where the holes were, it would have showed through the openings. So that's why on the outside, I use my art glitter glue in that fine tip bottle. Then for the vellum piece, I put some of the liquid glue on the back and kind of rubbed it around with my hands so you wouldn't really see the adhesive through the vellum. Then I brought in my circle of diamonds. I put that where it should go and then I used that to know where to place my vellum piece. Now my head had to get in there so I did cut out just a little bit of that. Once I had the sentiment in place, I went back in with the bottle of glue and I tacked down the corners and again I would kind of rub around that glue with my finger before I pressed it in place. I did set a stamp block on this and I let it dry for about 5 minutes. While that was drying off camera, I added some foam tape to the back of the stitched piece. I did put foam tape anywhere there was stitching, just to make sure everything was kind of at the same level. And to give me some wiggle room when I go to place this on the card front, since I do have to kind of situate it around the sentiment, I added some liquid glue to the foam as well. Once that was in place, I brought in a larger clear stamp block, set it on top, and let it dry for again about 5 minutes. After it had dried off screen, I added a scrap of the pattern paper to the inside, and I stamped and heat embossed my personal stamp on the back of the card. 
I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together today's card using the new Stitch Die of the Month from Spellbinders. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I use in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.